This is CNN Breaking News. And we have breaking news in our politics lead now. We just got our hands on the transcript of a very important voicemail. It is a message from President Trump's personal lawyer, left for former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn's lawyer. And it backs up what Michael Flynn told Special Counsel Robert Mueller, that members of the Trump team might have been trying to influence him and his testimony. I want to bring in CNN's Shimon Prokopez. And Shimon, what does the voicemail from the president's lawyer say? That's right, Jake. This voicemail transcript, which we have just uh, gotten from the court, was just released moments ago. And as you said, you'll recall that this was a voice message that was sent to Michael Flynn's attorney. Uh, that attorney and Michael Flynn turned it over to the special counsel's office because there was some concern that perhaps people inside the Trump administration, perhaps even his own lawyer, the president's own lawyer, John Dowd, was somehow trying to influence Michael Flynn's cooperation. And let me go ahead and just read this. Pretty, it's a pretty lengthy voicemail, so I'm going to go ahead and just read it to you. And it starts out with a call from John Dowd to Rob Kellner, who was Michael Flynn's lawyer at the time. He says, hey, Rob, um, this is John again. Maybe I'm sympathetic. Uh, I understand your situation, but let me see if I can't state it in starker terms. If you have, and it wouldn't surprise me if you've gone on to make a deal with and I'll work with the government, I understand that you can't join the defense. So that's one thing. If, on the other hand, we have, there's information that implicates the president, then we've got a national security issue or maybe a national, secu a national security issue. I don't know. Some issue we got to, we got to deal with not only for the president, but for the country. So you know then, then you know we need some kind of heads up um, just for the sake of protecting all of our interests. If we can, without you having to give up any confidential information, and if it's, in the, if it's in the former, then you know, remember what we've always said about the president and his feelings toward Flynn, and that still remains. But, well, in any event, let me know, and I appreciate your listening and taking the time. Thanks, pal. John Dow uh, says to Michael Flynn's attorney. The key part here, obviously, uh, Jake, is where he says, talks about the president's feelings concerning Michael Flynn. And that is where perhaps there was some concern on the part of Michael Flynn's attorneys that maybe the president was trying to influence his cooperation with the special counsel's office. The idea that it's a phone call in which both Flynn's cooperation with the government is being discussed and the president having positive feelings about Michael Flynn being discussed, the idea being that somehow there's a suggestion by Mr. Dowd, the president's attorney at the time, don't say anything bad about the president. He wants to pardon you. That's the, 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 I'm sorry, John Dowd. That, that's the implication. Right. And there you see John Dowd on the screen here. That's exactly the implication here, Jake. Uh, the mere fact that they're saying, hey, listen, you know what? The president still views Michael Flynn favorably. Maybe in the end, there could be some inferences here. You can see where folks could think, well, maybe they were trying to influence, uh, influence Michael Flynn here. Because if the president's saying, hey, I still think very highly of Michael Flynn, I'll take care of him. Of course, time and time again, throughout the, the investigation, we had heard these kinds of contacts between people associated with the president and those who were cooperating with the investigation, where the president wanted folks to know, hey, I still think very highly of you. I'm still going to take care of you. Do the right thing in the end. Uh, and perhaps this was the message that the, uh, jo John Dowd, the president's lawyer, was trying to send Michael Flynn. All right, Shimon Prokopez, uh, thanks so much. Uh, let's talk about this. So Caitlin here's Collins. what Mueller wrote about this in his report, because we knew that there was a voicemail. We knew it was from a lawyer. We weren't sure who, but of course now it is John Dowd. And they essentially determined that this voicemail could have obstructed the investigation, but what they didn't know was whether or not the president himself had prompted that phone call, had told John Dowd to make that phone call. So in his report, and I'll be brief, Mueller wrote that the sequence of events could have had the potential to affect Flynn's decision to cooperate, as well as the extent of his cooperation, which we now know is pretty extensive. But Mueller says, because of privilege issues, we could not determine whether the president was person personally involved or knew about the specific message that John Dowd delivered to Mike Flynn's lawyers. So that's the question here. They don't know, and that's something that they didn't get because they didn't talk to the president himself. You disagree? Yeah, I mean, I just read it. It's, it's John Dowd's the president's lawyer. He's saying, hey, listen, if, if, if you guys are going to cut a deal, we can't, you can't be a part of our, of our joint defense pack. We need to know that. If you have implicate, stuff that implicates the president, I understand that. It's a national security issue. you got to move on. 
I don't see there's any issue. I, I'd encourage everybody in America to go read it and read it for themselves because there's nothing here that says if you do something or don't do something, you're going to be pardoned. But Robbie, I think it's clear. Them, he's asking no. them what they told the special counsel. No, that that, it, it, he, said, I, he said, I understand you may not be able to tell me anything because of confidentiality. Right, but he, he does like say if, if there's information that implicates the president, we have a national security issue. Uh, so we've got to deal with that. Did, yeah, we just like a heads up. With like the, a heads the up. the confines. Whatever said, you can say that's lawyer, not confidential. Right? I, I, used to, I used to practice the law, right? right? Counsel talk to one another during a case to, to, to determine what they can and cannot, how they can proceed. Mm -hmm. This is two lawyers talking about very, very sensitive. Robbie, you're shaking yeah, but your they head. sound like mob lawyers. I mean, remember oh, how we Robbie, feel. Come on, remember Robbie. how we feel. Really? I mean, this is... John this Dowd is, is one of the... So I would say this. You're real... John Dow would take great umbrage with you calling him a, a Let me tell you, player. there is well, so What he said, much... the quote exactly without the accent yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, remember what we've always said about the president and his feelings towards Flynn. That, so that the president, president like, likes Michael Flynn. Sounds like mob, mob lawyers lawyer? to me. Okay, well, I think any, and... I think any member of the D.C. Let's, let, let's, say... let's just Robbie finish. Okay. And look, there is so much smoke at this point. I'm like, we're all choking, okay? And the problem that we're having here is that the guy who's an expert on all of this, Bob Mueller, is going forward and kind of speaking in subtleties and, frankly, is being quite vague about what's going on. I heard him say the president may have committed crimes, but he didn't say that. He said, if I had evidence, you know, da 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 da, da. If I knew he hadn't, I would, have, I would have said so. At some point, this has got to break, because the problem we're having is a bunch of people are lying, okay, and the people who know the truth aren't, just putting it all out there. And that's why I think Mueller has got to get on the Hill. He has got to testify, and he's got to answer questions beyond what's in the written print. There, I, I do agree the idea that, with the idea that this is going to cause Democrats to want, even more so than before, Tulu, um, Mueller to testify and to testify publicly. Yeah, if you look at this within the context of the entire Mueller report, there are other instances where Mueller says that President Trump and his lawyers sort of dangled pardons or said to Michael Cohen, for instance, you know, before he started cooperating with the government, you know, the president has fond feelings towards you. And then after he started cooperating with the government, the emotions sort of changed and it became much more acrimonious towards uh, Michael Cohen. So I think there's a sense from Democrats that they need to find out more about what the president was doing, whether or not he was trying to influence the investigation. You remember there was this scene where President Trump let everyone get out of the Oval Office and then talked to James Comey and said, I hope you could let Flynn go. That was another episode where Bob Mueller said this could be obstruction of justice. So if you put everything The together, bar disagrees, yeah, right? But yeah, exactly. And, and no, the two people were in that room. Jim Comey and the President of the United States. And, you know, and Jim Comey, and I'll, and I'll push back on this strong, right? Because Jim Comey, time and time again, Jim Comey is the defender of democracy and freedom here. Jim Comey under oath before Dianne Feinstein when she said, why didn't you come to us and say, tell us this? Why didn't you come to us and tell us you think the president was obstructing justice? He said, well, I guess I just lacked the fortitude to do so. You know, Jim Comey could have gone at that very first time. Instead, he went back eight times. He could have gone to the Hill. He had Dianne Feinstein and many other members of Congress would have backed him up for that. Let's, and let's, but let's talk about the fact uh, that there is this different interpretation of these instances because Bill Barr... Uh, in his remarks uh, to Jan Crawford at CBS makes it clear that while Mueller laid out a case of 10 or so potential acts of obstruction of justice, he didn't label them as such and said that he would, would indict, but it, but it certainly seems as though he thinks they might be. Uh, Barr says he disagrees. This is what he said to CBS. Many of the instances would not amount to obstruction. We didn't agree with the legal analysis uh, a lot of the legal analysis in the report, it did not reflect the views of the department. It was the views of a particular lawyer or lawyers. Now, Mueller would disagree with that last part because Mueller said it made, it made it clear that the report is his, even though right. he had a team under him. It's that, that he signed his name to it. It's his testimony. So he wouldn't say, oh, it's just lawyer or lawyers. And that's a little bit of Barr saying that is one of the reasons why Trump likes him so much. Right, and it's Mueller's team, and he defended that report pretty strongly when he came out to the podium for the first time in uh, two years that we've seen him. But you see Barr there taking umbrage with the, te the special counsel's team, which we've seen him do before, especially when there was the letter about how Barr was handling the release of the report and what had been put out there. And so you're continuing to see that. But, of course, you're seeing him say he disagreed with the legal analysis that was in the special counsel's report. That's not what we first heard from the, uh, Bill Barr when he first came out after the special counsel's investigation was ended. So you're seeing him fill out his thoughts a little bit more during and, and, and I'll tell you this, Bob Barr gets, t he, I mean, excuse me, Bill uh, Barr. B b b you're Mueller, dating yourself. No, no, Mueller. No, no, Mueller. No, no, Mueller. Mueller. Bob Mueller. Very different. Bill Barr, Bob, <laughs> too, many, too many actors. But Mueller gets, goes up before subpoenaed or not subpoenaed, he's going to say, 
Read the report. Read the report. But this is the problem here, Jay. This, yeah. this is my problem, is you have an activist attorney general who's going out and actively spinning the American people, and I would argue told lies in his first press conference, and then you have the person who knows the truth, the taxpayer-funded expert on what has gone on, and he won't talk. And th this is what we, we wonder why we can't seem to get resolution because well, he, he we did are, talk. Yeah. because the people with the facts are leaving a void. He wrote, he wrote a report. He wrote a 400-page right. report. He did talk.